Hi, everybody. Who's in here? Hi. <laughs> This video comes out in half an hour. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Franco. Oh my gosh. I know your username and I had no idea what your name was this whole time. That's so nice. <laughs> so. We actually shot a bit of the music video in this room, which is kind of cool, but you can see it now, and you'll see it in a second. If anybody has any questions, I can't believe the day's already here. <laughs> How's everyone's morning? What's going on? Where is everybody located? Hi, John. So nice to hear from you. I haven't seen you in so long. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my studio. This is my home studio. <laughs> Hi, Auntie Donna. So I'm pretty sure this video of, so, so far I have lucky number 21 and Love Life out, which hopefully you've seen. And this video was directed by Eric Rojas, who also directed Love Life in 21. He edited Lucky Number. And it is super, super cool to see over the years how we've both grown as creatives and how the team has tightened and our vision has come aligned. So I'm so excited for you to see how this has come out. I'm super stoked. Hi, Phoenix, Arizona, New Jersey, Chicago. Oh my goodness, the difference in the weather. Dublin, oh my gosh, I studied abroad in Ireland and it was the best. I wanna go back so badly, it's so magical and so inspiring as a writer. No, um, I actually recorded these songs with my producer, Greg Wells, at his studio. Oh, I'm he hearing that there's an echo. Does it sound okay? Um, we recorded this song in France at Studio La Fabrique. And we were at an event for Mix with the Masters. So there were about 20 people watching us write this song. And the rest of the songs are doubling. Okay, let me see how I can fix this. I don't know, what is going on? Um. What, if, what about now? Is that better? No, I have no effects on the mic. <laughs> Does this work better? <laughs> All right. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so I was saying that we recorded this song in France at Studios La Fabrique for a Mix with the Masters event. So there were 20 people watching us make this song. That is not the normal recording situation. The rest of the songs we recorded at Greg's studio here in LA. Um, his, his old studio in Culver City called Rocket Carousel 
we did the three other songs that um, are released and everything features at his new studio here in LA as well. So most of my like TikToks and videos on Instagram I do in this room and um, with my gear and stuff like that. But everything that you hear on Spotify and Apple Music is recorded at Greg Studios. Hi. Okay, cool. I'm glad it sounds okay. Boat. My, my dad said boat. Um, so I went into that Mix with the Masters event with the song idea and just the, I'm still recovering, just that part of the melody. And, uh, Greg and I were eating lunch or breakfast, I don't remember what it was, and we were going over ideas that we could write about. And I just sang that one part of the hook and he was like, that's that's the one he went to the piano and came up with the chords and everything kind of just became what you hear from there it was pretty cool how quickly he he jumped to those chords and could hear it i was kind of just playing with rhythm on the guitar and singing whatever came to mind i actually have a voice memo that i'll show you guys eventually of greg being like Hold on one second, I really need to brush my teeth <laughs> while we were writing the song because we were about to be in front of a whole room full of people. So he was just like, before, <laughs> if we're eating lunch, coming up with this idea, I'm gonna need a second. And that came up in the voice memo where he's like, hold that idea, I need to go brush my teeth right now. <laughs> it's super funny. But yeah, I mean, as far as the idea goes, most of it came to life during the sessions with everyone in the room, um, which is a little different than my song Lucky Number. When I did that for Pure Mix with the cameras around us, I had a little bit fuller of an idea as far as like the whole chorus was already there. I got to be a part of Mix with the Masters because of Greg he invited me to come do the sessions with him after the pure mix stuff went so well and we just work really well as a team so he was like i think that you can handle this being in front of a bunch of people writing a song it's nerve-wracking but also exhilarating and exciting especially when you're in such a cool place If you guys got any more questions, keep them coming. I love it. If you have any questions about the video. Oh, thank you, Pasco. Uh, no, it's not in mono. That's so strange. For me, it's not coming out. I can tell you. Oh, I hear it. You're right. Well. <laughs> that is very weird. I don't want to spend this whole time figuring that out. But. I'm sorry that that's happening. Hopefully you can hear me okay. My favorite scene in the video is the transition into the first chorus, I think. Actually... I have to put my stream tomorrow. Um. 
I did ask where everyone is. It's okay, sorry, I can't find the... I was just looking for the mono button, but... I don't see it. On this. Okay, my favorite scene in the video, sorry. Um, it, there are a few of them. There's the beginning of the video. I have these two friends that come in. I don't want to give away the whole video, but it's fine. I'll prepare you to um, kind of represent the outside energy and not having your own space of, of people talking at you in, in both ears and just not being able to hear yourself. And I really love how that scene aligns with the emotion I was pulling from when writing this song visually uh, and then there's just this power moment where I kind of run out and escape that and that is a big moment for me um the color and design of the music video to match the vibe of the song. So for me, each color in the artwork described a certain emotion. And in the beginning of the video, you'll see I change different rooms with different colors on the wall for each emotion. And I thought about that a lot as far as how to what I was trying to express a little bit more abstractly with the artwork into something more narrative and literal in the video. So that that was a big deal for me. And also just like we go out into the city in the nighttime and the pinks and the blues are present um, as a certain depth and um, f richness and f freeness and being in touch with yourself a little bit more than than the other scenes. Um, I had a lot of fun in France. It was the best. Uh, totally unforgettable. Absolutely unforgettable. Everybody there was the best. Um, we all still have a little Facebook group and we check in with each other now and then. Hey, did this help? <laughs> Is the sound better now? Just asking. Um, yeah, it was totally unforgettable. I would love to do it again. Hi, hello in the UK. Okay, I won't worry about it. I just changed it to mono, so I was wondering. <laughs> I know we have a lot of audio people in here. Who was on my team? Um, I had Eric Rojas directing, editing, coloring. Elaine Tantra was shooting behind the scenes. She's so awesome. I met her at a live show recently. She took my photos, and I was like... You're taking all of my photos, please and thank you. Uh, Veronica did my hair and makeup. She also did my hair and makeup in the photo shoot for the cover art. Uh, and Sam Fine did some additional cinematography and helped Eric with some VHS footage. Greg produced and wrote the song with me, mixed and mastered it himself. How did I get into being a singer-songwriter? I do think it's more common for an artist to want to be a songwriter nowadays. It's just more of a talked about thing. And I feel like in the past decade, especially in pop music, there was a rise of the singer-songwriter um, with like Adele, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift. Everybody wrote their own songs. You could even see it if you were watching like reality shows on music most people at the beginning of something like american idol were only doing covers and then you started to see people auditioning with original songs 
So I think there was definitely a shift in people wanting to be not just an artist and also a singer-songwriter. Uh, for me, I always wanted to be a singer-songwriter. I, when I started playing guitar at 16, within a few months, I immediately started writing my own songs. And it was about telling my story and singing what was on my heart. And I went to university for songwriting, the music business, and rather than performance and vocal performance. So it was always a, a main part of it for me. Yeah, yeah, I am, s so I'm in a, Greg has recorded everything that I've done, we're really good friends, and he signed me to a production deal a couple of years ago, so we're definitely still in contact, and I've worked with him a lot. We have a few more songs coming for you, one very, very soon, uh, like within this month, you will be hearing about it so please stay updated on my instagram facebook and my mailing list you'll be hearing about it this week i promise um before music full-time i was a student i was a student uh other than that i sold guitar string bracelets on the street <laughs> i was an assistant at an acupuncture place in high school but it was really straight music it was so fun filming the video. I put some clips on my story from the moment where I was just um, realizing what was happening, but music video days make me feel so alive as an artist to start to feel the story of the song, get to see it. And I love being in front of the camera and having the crew around and everybody putting in a certain effort to tell that story in such a different way of being in the song rather than just singing it. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to have the song and let people hear it and ha put, have their own picture, but to put your picture to it, it's, it, it's a different level of an experience, and I have so much fun pulling that together. I also had the best team around. Like, Eric was, is such a goofball and my makeup artist and everybody was just the best energy and we were joking around the whole time oh thank you so much next on the horizon is more music um i have a few more songs coming i have i'm playing a sold out show in new york next week with nicotine dolls which i'm excited about um that was going to be really cool because I'm actually playing the same venue that I first ever played my original music out in public at, uh, Rockwood Music Hall. So that's very special for me to go back there now. The idea behind this song was... I, I wrote it from the perspective of being a very sensitive person and... Um, taking on the emotions of the people around me and sometimes forgetting how, how to leave space for myself, especially when it's people I love, um, can easily get overwhelmed and um, just need time. So that's really what the song is, is about. It's about um, taking your space and learning how to set that boundary and give yourself a second to to hear your own voice oh thank you so much very professional and humble and it's put me on such a beautiful feeling to see how you work thank you so so much were you watching the pure mix series i feel like maybe you have i love it is very cool um, to have shown my process and have let people see how I write and work and, and to get messages like that. So thank you very much. Guys, eight minutes. The sun right now. <laughs> Hi.
I'm using my phone as a webcam. That's why you see me looking this way, because my computer's over here, so. Hey. <laughs> I keep my vocals warmed up by practicing. Um, that's it. Just keep singing. Keep playing, keep practicing, it's real. It's very, very real. I will say that, like, um, earlier this year, I was posting a lot of covers on TikTok, and making those videos definitely helped warm my range up, because it was just such a variety of songs every day, like, you're covering three songs a day, you're constantly exercising. Um, how cool, in Belgium. Th I, thank you so much for watching that whole series, that's amazing. That's amazing. Let's say your songwriters influence me. I would say my biggest influences are um, Joni Mitchell, Adele, Lauren Hill. I love Taylor Swift's recent work, especially Folklore and Evermore. That her songwriting on that was absolutely incredible, and everything. But those records, I was it made me re-appreciate her work. Um, just anybody who really dives into themselves and puts their heart into their records, that's what I'm trying to do. Anything honest and real and a peek into their life, um, I, that's what I admire. Um, especially the first three, like, yeah. They were. Folklore and Evermore, I've listened to reading, I just had the lyrics up for everything on first listen, and it was just straight poetry. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Ah! Five minutes! Five minutes. Oh, another one of my influences would be Annie Lennox, and you guys, I was at the movie theater the other day watching the David Bowie documentary, and Annie Lennox was there, and I ran into her while walking out of the bathroom, and she just looked at me and she just went, hi, and I was like, that's enough, I don't even have to say, oh my god, you're Annie Lennox, because that was enough to know that she was a beautiful person. <laughs> I love her. It's the soulfulness for me. It's the authentic. Um, you just, I can tell that you just sat down and you didn't try to be anything but you. I think that's the hardest part. Yeah, I love rock music. Who doesn't love rock music? If I like any Lennox, I like rock music. <laughs> uh, my classic influences. I mean, Still Recovering is, when you break it down as a piano ballad, it's just got modern production. Um, so... My influences are always present in everything I do, whatever the soundscape is. It's the core of the songwriting. Um, the storytelling, I mean, that whole song, the details, the way it pulls through, the structure of this is my detailed verse and this is my bigger chorus. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. It's such, a, it's such a treat to be able to talk about my process and the journey of creating this and to know that you're here and you care about it. Um, that I feel lucky to, to have an audience that is willing to hang out with me like this. That's so cool. 
And I'm so excited for everything else that I'm making that you're about to see. And just knowing that it's not just this video. There's more coming. There's a lot more coming. <laughs> The next two songs that are coming, I'm very, very excited about. They are super personal to me, and they do that thing that I was just talking about with my influences, where you just feel like you're kind of opening their diary. And I guess a lot of people feel like most of my music does that. But there are certain songs that do it a bit more than others. Two minute alerts! Ah! Merch is, is here. I have Still Recovering merch. I am announcing it this week, but it's actually live on my um, website, brycedrew.com slash shop right now. I designed them myself. We have some hoodies that say Blame It on the Moon. I have a hat that says Still Recovering because everybody's still recovering. I mean, come on. And it's blue corduroy. 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 It's blue corduroy with um, purple stitching. I love it so much. Go check it out after this if you want to. I'll write it. I'll write the link here. There you go. <laughs> ah, oh my god. Okay. Premiere. Guys, one minute. Okay. Are you ready? Thank you so much for doing this with me. <laughs> Happy Friday! It is a real strat, yes. Okay, here we go.